The simplest form of oyster aquaculture is really what we would call on bottom aquaculture. Now this is a grower who's doing this on a very small experimental scale. He wants to find out if all the other things that he do, does with racks and bags and baskets, if it's worth doing. So he simply spread a number of the oysters on the bottom. There are growers who do this on very large scales, but essentially you're taking your oysters and once they're to a size that you're comfortable with putting on the bottom, which for most growers would be somewhere in that inch long range, you simply spread them on the bottom and you wish them luck. Uh, you can see that uh, the oysters are partially buried in the mud, but despite that you are getting some good growth on some of these oysters. Remember, this is how they naturally would grow. Um, so you can see there are some edges on the oysters indicating they're growing. But I certainly would be concerned that there will be some loss here. And that loss could be to burial and it could be to predators. Um, I guess the, the trade-off here is that it may be much easier to do. And so that's a potentially worthwhile trade-off that you'd have to decide in your system if it's worth doing. Uh, certainly one of the less expensive ways of, of doing oyster culture and typically called rack and bag or, or in this case rack and tray. It's very simple in concept. Essentially you have some type of rack that keeps your animals up off the bottom and in this case they've made it out of rebar that's been bent into uh, shape uh, to keep it up off the bottom. In some cases people weld racks, make them that way. I've also seen them made out of PVC. Really any structure that you think will survive the uh, ocean elements and uh, support that weight are, will work perfectly fine. And then similarly, the rack or bag on top can be made of a lot of materials. This is vinyl coated wire. Uh, you can see um, very basic construction and the oysters just live in that and that keeps them up off the bottom. Uh, in this case, cable ties are used to keep it shut. Um, the disadvantages of these are that the uh, oysters tend to get moved to one side by wave and wind action and that they tend to grow uh, in a, a more elongate shape rather than the rounded deep cup. So they require a lot of tending. You have to come out, open up your racks or bags and move your oysters around to reposition them in the bag. But that's an ongoing, an ongoing concern. So those are uh, some of the racks and trays. We've also got some other that we can look at. Here in Wellfleet, where this is an excellent example of oyster aquaculture, this would be rack and bag, and the, the guys you see are carrying out rebar racks that they then have uh, bags that, which contain the oysters that they'll cable tie onto the tops of those. And one of the other benefits to rack and bag is the oysters are, are suspended up off the bottom and also they're up in the water column which helps them with feeding and also in an intertidal area they'll be exposed for a certain length of time during the day when the tide is out and that can help to reduce fouling the organisms that are not um, adapted to being exposed out of water would then die back so it's another benefit. And we're going to review the oyster culture technique of off-bottom culture and this uh, particular one is bags suspended off the bottom in the intertidal zone. And uh, Bill, if you would describe this method. Sure, Diane. This is, uh, this is a method that's become a lot more popular in uh, recent years. It's uh, adopted from an Australian system. The concept is pretty simple. You're putting oysters in baskets that are suspended off of the bottom and put in long lines across the, uh, across the surface. The advantage of that is uh, the oysters uh, stay out of the mud um, and stay clean and actually there's a tumbling action when the when the tide comes in these baskets move and the oysters tumble a little bit and that makes for a prettier oyster that uh, sometimes when you grow them in racks and bags they'll grow fairly straight out and uh, that's not the prettiest oyster that the market would like so the advantage of these is that they tumble the oysters uh, in, a, in a natural action with the tide and make them a rounder deeper cupped oyster it's an interesting system. It's certainly very modular, very easy to handle. These are relatively small units. Um, there are, these are available from aquaculture supplies, uh, most aquaculture supply places, um, in different brand names. There are different types, and uh, we've got some of those that you'll see, see here. They're fairly easy, though. If you needed to take your oysters off, go back and cull through them to get out the small ones, you can just pop off the baskets like that, and you've got your basket. Um, they've got these caps, and they're different modifications on caps so that you can get in and uh, work with your oysters. You can see these oysters 
Uh, we've got a little muscle set on these oysters. And so uh, if I wanted to go through here and, and get some of them off to clean up my uh, oysters, I could, I could do that. So you can fill your boat with these and, and head back to your basement and do your culling back at home. So it makes a fairly pretty oyster. It's fairly easily handled. The um, tricks, some of the tricks with this system are the line that you use. Um, you can imagine that in a uh, fairly wavy environment um, that this type of line, you might get some, wear, some uh, wearing action on over time. So you've got to carefully select this line for your site. Um, this works very well for uh, this grower in this area. It's not, an, not a lot of waves in here. It's fairly protected. I've used a similar line in a more exposed environment and had the hooks actually erode through the line and, and that's when you start to lose baskets. The other key element, uh, other than the hooks and keeping track of the line, of course, is what keeps the line there. And here, this is a fairly sturdy frame that the grower has put in uh, so that you can get nice tension across the line to keep the baskets up. It's important then that the anchor be one that you believe in. Um, if uh, for whatever reason you started to lose, th this started to tip over, the line started to break, you'd want to make sure that something was holding your bags there. So you'd use some type of, for example, a helix anchor screwed into the bottom that you can uh, chain your lines to. Another important point about this system is that the weight bearing part of the system is really at the two ends. That's where you're going to invest a lot of your time and energy making a, a good brace, is at, brace at the end of the line. But you will want posts along the way just to help keep the line up. These posts are wooden posts that go in about, uh, they probably go in about three feet. Um, and uh, as uh, the Army Corps requires, these can't go over 18 inches, so they don't present uh, too much of a hazard to navigation. But again, these, what I'd call dead man posts, aren't really weight bearing, but certainly help keep the line uh, up out of the mud for you. Here's an alternative structure for the bags that you might hang on your baskets. These are a lot cheaper, uh, they're homemade, so you're gonna have to spend the time doing it. It's uh, basically aquaculture mesh, stiff mesh, again available typically at a commercial supply store. Uh, folded into a bag form, pre-cut, folded shut, and then with this stiff wire, um, this, the wire wraps through and closes the bag up. Um, notice the hooks are also a little different so that there are varieties of hooks. So this is a much less expensive bag than some of the other ones, uh, but it does require you to construct it. And that's an important point to, to make. Growers have pointed out to me that with oysters, it's best to take advantage of making as much gear as you can uh, at home when the tide, when you don't care about the tide. You really want to be as efficient as possible when you're out here. So make all the bags, everything you can at home, and then come out ready to go so that you're using the tide to its advantage. That's another reason uh, winter is a good time to make a lot of this gear.